welcome back from that break. So just gone by us, um, the president of the Hemp Association of Ghana, Nana Kwekwajman. So you now know the distinction between cannabis, marijuana, or let's say weed, and hemp. And so now we have Mohammed Tofik on the line from UK. But before we join him, let's quickly take a look at this video. There we go. Hello, thank you very much for joining Team Mohammed Tofik. Many thanks for joining us here in Ghana. Pleasure is all mine. All right. So, first of all, let me find out from you. Conference. It's amazing. You have a lot in stock, but I tend to wonder. I mean, we, we, this we, have, we, we call ourselves a digital era. We live in the Clearly, digital because world. this is a program that is well attended. I've been a participant, and you have people coming from Nigeria, South Africa. And that's a question I want to put across to you. I mean, I've, I've been asked these questions for the last uh, six months. That's how. To Africa. It's currently established in Europe and has a relationship also for Switzerland. This is Mohamed Shabab and I'm... We're here today at the Digital Bank. Bank. Thank you very much, uh, Mohamed. Um, Axel Microfinance Bank is a national microfinance bank. We really does, right? Very clearly, we do. And um, it's a continuous process. And so um, the concept for us is digital first across Nigeria. I would like you to give me an understanding or rather feedback of how you feel the Digital Banking Summit was organized and how are you enjoying the summit rather? Okay, since yesterday, the digital bank. Hi, my name is Ash Dasmalchi. Oh, I'm Banking a... Summit. I'm currently with Dr. Samuel Tenge, who is the head of personal development. Personal the... advice. All right, thank you very much for your time. I'm here with the very. Done a few of these types of events, but that's I found the right people, the right level. Great, and so there's no doubt that the COVID-19 pandemic and the novel coronavirus has really had impact on all the sectors, economy, political, education, and all that. Now, I want to find out from an aspect the impact it has had on the banking and financial sector. And so we have on Skype, Mohamed Tofik. Yes, the name is quite lengthy. I'll let him mention it himself if he's on standby. Mohamed, can you hear me? Mohamed. Yes, uh, how are you doing today? It's morning here in Ghana. Good morning. 
Oh, good morning to you. Well, good afternoon to me. I can I can hardly hear you. Can you hear me? I'm actually not able to really see you there. Okay, I think it's better now. How are you doing? Is it better? Can you hear me now? I can, I can. How are you doing? Wonderful. I'm very well, thank you for asking. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How is the Ramadan treating you? Well, I must tell you, this Ramadan indeed is very, very special compared to the, I mean, whatever Ramadans I've seen in my life because we're under lockdown now and uh, it gives us much time to reflect upon ourselves and kind of uh, do what we've missed on in terms of our prayers and all of that. So it is a very, very special Ramadan. We're just hoping that uh, it was not this challenging though. Okay. okay. How's Ramadan okay. treating you? Oh, we are doing well. We are doing well. Things are in order. Okay, Wonderful. quickly, let's, let's zoom into why you are on, on air now. We know definitely um, the banking and financial sector have been or has been affected by COVID-19. Now, generally, mm -hmm. from your perspective, I want you to give us a fair idea of the impact on the banking and financial sector from the start. Well, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I like how you just, uh, you know, no beating around the bush straight to the point. Well, uh, to be very honest, COVID-19 as a pandemic, I must tell you, Ruben, it's not it's not uh, only affected a particular industry per se, okay? I like how you're specific about banking and finance, but I must tell you, it's actually a challenge to the mankind itself, right? And, uh, you know, the COVID-19 and the banking and capital markets industry, I must tell you, the coronavirus outbreak is causing widespread concern and economic hardship for consumers, businesses, communities across the globe. The situation is changing quickly with widespread impacts. Some general guidance on what banks and businesses should know in terms of, uh, you know, with respect to crisis management, with respect to response, workforce, uh, risk management, with respect to supply chain or finance and liquidity, or maybe tax and trade, strategy and brand, and, and many more. And, and Ruben, that's, that's not it, you know, for, especially for the BFSI sector, even though, you know, BFSI is considered essentials, I must tell you, most companies already, most companies, not just the banking sector, but most companies already have a very stringent business continuity plan in place, right? But any business continuity plan we need to understand may not be able to fully address the fast-moving and unknown variables of an outbreak, especially something like COVID-19. Now, a typical contingency plan, uh, Ruben, don't generally take into account widespread, like, you know, quarantine or proposed school closures, added travel restrictions that may occur in case of a health emergency that could last for an extended period of time. Like for example, you and I may be uh, given a date by our respected governments telling that the lockdown will be lifted on a certain date. But the government is doing what they can. They are not sure if the lockdown can be lifted or not. Why? Because the pandemic, the nature of it is it's in a way that you are not sure when how long you're going to extend these lockdowns as a result of which the losses continue. But since, uh, you know, to answer your question in, 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 in points, the very prime uh, issue that the banking and finance industry will or is facing is risk management. Because right now, there is... Okay, 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 okay. Quite in depth, quite in depth. Now, I want you to look at this for me. Um, so, what do you think is the most evident repercussion of the COVID 19? The most evident repercussion? Well, uh, okay. Uh, to be honest, everything, every repercussion that, that uh, one faces is very, very evident. I mean, we are not going to categorize what is evident, what is not evident. But uh, just to highlight something that is very, very important, I must tell you the widening, you know, the, the coronavirus is, is actually absolutely widening the corporate digital divide. Okay? Now, workplace mandate group 
that employees work from home and automakers shut down their, their plants. We are seeing the most rapid organizational transformation ever, right? It's very challenging because never before has any establishment and, you know, done any kind of evolved economies faced the kind of shock we are facing today. And nothing... When I say nothing, I actually mean nothing quite compares to the physical digital divide COVID-19 is revealing and how it affects the nature of our work. Look at look at risk today. I mean, uh, there, a certain organization in the UAE was taken over by another organization, which has laid down about 900 employees. There is an organization, uh, you know, that has laid down 2,600 employees without no pay. I mean, it it is very, very bad. Why do I have to suffer before, you know, because of a pandemic? Okay, I'm already a sufferer, but why do I lose my job? Because look at this. In a way, we can trace what's happening today to a huge digital transformation that's already very well underway. But firms have been moving to an increasingly digital core based on software, data, and digital networks for years, right? Now, it is no more an option, Ruben. You need to know this. Like, for example, if I were to ask you, would you, would you go digital with your, with your studio 10 years ago, what would you say? Come again, come again. If I were to ask you 10 yeah. years ago that, Ruben, do you want to take your business digital, what would your response be? Obviously, no. Then. Right? But now, Ruben, today you and I are doing an interview on Skype, which means the world has advanced. There are technological advancements as a result of which I'm sitting in some part of the world, you're sitting in some part of the world, we're able to talk. Now, uh, digitization is not an option anymore. So today, the, rather than digitizing the relationship between firm and customer alone, the virtual model digitizes the relationship between firm and employee. And that's why digital divide remains the biggest repercussions that is faced by uh, organizations due to COVID-19. Okay. Okay. Very well. So what next for, for, for those who are within the banking and financial sector? What next for them in terms of the organizations? Well... I mean, what next is an interesting question. Like, don't we all want to know what's next? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, with with the current situation, uh, mm. it, it is actually very tough to anticipate or forecast anything at all, uh, you know, Robin, because co the, the pandemic, COVID-19, will drastically impact most businesses, right? For mm. months, probably for years. The bottom line, this would be a short-term event. So businesses must prepare for a long haul. It is imperative for entre you know, entrepreneurs, enterprises, to build in a necessary operational resiliency. Now, operational excellence is super important to survive this new reality, right? COVID-19 pandemic, Ruben, has showcased the value of IT and digital transformation. And organizations should use this time to accelerate the transition. Since you asked me what next, I can tell you. Uh, in terms of what next, there will be three top uh, negatives. But when I say negative, can you imagine COVID-19 having positive impacts on us? Hmm. Do you think COVID-19 has any kind of positive impact on humans? Uh, there's a bit of positivity in terms of necessity bringing out the best from people. People coming out with inventions and all, uh, producing their own face mask um, and all that. So in a way, you can say that's the positive aspect. It's bringing the best out of people. Right. I mean, I, I, I'm not a very big fan, of course, of COVID-19, but obviously the positive that I'm, I'm talking about is today we are more closer than ever with our families right? Mother nature is healing itself. Well, uh, let, me, let me just get back to the topic here. Top three negatives, I must tell you, COVID-19 uh, would be inability to visit customers. Like, the banks are not able to visit their customers. Because, and then this actually uh, has a significant decline in sales performance, Ruben. 
right? And this also is, I mean, impacted because there is inability to resume production, right? Now, at the same time, there are three positives for an enterprise because of COVID-19. That is, there is an absolutely improved corporate ability of long-distance collaborative work. We could not imagine a world with, you know, uh, working from home back to pretty much, you know, all the organization. But right now, everybody is doing it, and, and they, they do it pretty well, right? And there is, there is a wide recognition of value of digital transformation. Like I mentioned at the beginning, digital mm -hmm. transformation or IT today is not an option anymore. It is actually, uh, you know, a, a necessity. Also, people are gaining ability of online marketing and business development. Now, Ruben, the, the, the value of digital channels, products, and operations is immediately obvious to companies everywhere right now. So this is basically a wake-up call for the organization, if you ask me. Okay, okay. Now, to, to, to end the discussion, I, I want you to give us a fair idea of how, as the partnership director for ICSA, you, you intend educating the people. These, these are indeed one of the mediums that you'll be using. Do you have anything coming up? I'm unable to hear you, Ruben. Okay, so it what I'm saying like is, it's obvious that you've really had a number of seminars to educate people on the banking and financial sector. Since you are unable to congregate and educate people on that, are you planning any meeting via Zoom or Skype to get to meet and, and discuss it for people to learn more. Now, are you asking if, uh, if, if we are planning anything like yes, a conference? Yes, yes. I see, I see. Well, uh, International Center for Strategic Alliances upholds uh, the, the, the value of, of the corporate social responsibility we hold, right? Mm -hmm. By that I mean we are going to follow what the governments have asked us to do. We, I mean, conferences primarily are, are social gatherings. We bring in people like what we did in Ghana last year. We brought people from 17 different countries, right? And given the current situation, we are not going to be able to uh, do that any time in the near future. Obviously, that remains our focus. But what we are instead doing is we're, we obviously uh, are promoting digitization globally, so we might as well adapt it. So we're hosting exclusive webinars for a certain clients of ours. And plus, we're also hosting exclusive one-on-one -on -one meetings. Like, for example, a lot of banks in Ghana are now looking for DOTs. DOTs are digital onboarding tools. Now, there are very few DOT providers within the African continent. So we recently got a Slovakian uh, digital onboarding tool provider to Ghana. We introduce them, so we do these one-on-one -on -one meetings. That's what we are kind of focused on right now. And we're basically uh, focused on raising awareness, uh, raising awareness and making sure that people are connected with each other, business as per usual. Okay, okay. So finally, what, what do you have for our viewers? Finally, to conclude. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean... I, I wanted to talk for long, but since you say finally, I am going to keep it oh, but, short. But you can put everything, well, uh, all, all, whatever you have, I mean, you can put them to summarize it for us. If there's, some, if there's a question I didn't ask you and you want to put across. One thing I want to, right, okay. So there is one thing I wanted to mention before, you know, before we say bye to each other. Now, first of all, every organization will, should very much look at prioritizing operational resilience. Secondly, we should be thankful to uh, everything that our respective governments are doing, right? When I say that, what I mean is, uh, now, the Ghana government, in one example, I'm just going to give you an example, the, the central bank announced that all mobile phone subscribers could open a wallet and transfer up to 1,000 cities, that is roughly about, I would say, $170, I guess, so without providing additional documentation. And Ruben, the government efforts, you know, in, in, in to encourage digital payments 
and ease regulation could be a catalyst for high adoption. Now, this is a real opportunity to drive financial inclusion, right? Uh, the Central Bank of Ghana has also taken measures to mitigate the negative impact of the outbreak uh, by including cutting interest rates and reserve requirements and decreasing bank con conservation buffers. Now, the reason why I wanted to mention this is I happened to speak to two leading gentlemen in the industry before, uh, you know, when I got to know you were going to have, have a discussion with me. I spoke to two leading uh, gentlemen who are like the torch bearers of the banking industry in Nigeria and Ghana. I spoke to Mr. Adegoke Elijah Adegbami, who is the CEO for Main Street Microfinance Bank, okay? He also happens to author, he also happens to author uh, the book of digitization in microfinance. Now, I mean, call, call, him, call him somebody who's very good at forecasting things or somebody whose prediction is so apt. He, had, he basically predicted that digitization would be the way forward for a microfinance institution. And uh, in fact, he was awarded as the best microfinance CEO of the year last year. He's authoring another book. So people like him are, are in fact, he shut his bank down. When I say shut his bank down, their physical branches are locked. They're only operating digitally right now. Only digital transactions are on. Likewise, I happen to speak to Mr. Victor Yo Asante. Mr. Victor Yo Asante is the CEO for FBN Ghana, right? Now, Ruben, uh, have you walked into a bank since the time uh, lockdown has taken place? Are you with me, Ruben? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I was asking you, did you get a chance to visit a branch of a bank since the time the lockdown has been announced? No, 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 no. I haven't. I haven't. Okay, well, let me tell you. FBN has come up with such amazing, uh, you know, work they are doing. They, they have, they are sanitizing clients that walk in first, okay? Mm. They're going to wash their hands. They're sanitizing them. 75% of the staff is working from home mm. Mm. and you know all the time three months or and on, on all charts and this is the distribution so uh our network seems to be um, unstable at the moment. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, Ruben. Are you with me? Yes. So I think you were about wrapping up so we can hear you. Okay. One, one thing I wanted to tell everybody, mm. uh, all the viewers and everybody that's watching us is let's all be responsible. Right? Let's all be safe. Let's stay home. Let's absolutely please do not step up. Okay. 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 Uh, due to time, we are unable to continue the conversation. And, but we are, we are grateful to you for joining us via Skype from UK. I'm sure we'll hear from you often to get to brief us on issues pertaining to the banking and financial sector, especially within this COVID-19 uh, a pandemic period, if I can put it that way. Thank you for joining us, Mohamed. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, I will hope to see you very soon. Next week, uh, we will catch up again. We will come with some experts from across the globe and, and talk further into how the pandemic is affecting and how they're battling the pandemic and everything. So until then, thank you. It was a pleasure being hosted by you. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mohamed. Okay, so that was Mohamed, uh, partnership director for ISCA, right there from UK, helping us to do justice on the effects of COVID 19 on the banking and financial sector. So, on that note, we will take a very quick break. When we return, the national platform continues. Stay tuned.